All right, guys, today we're going to get information from a graph of a function. So we're going to look at a graph and see what all we can tell from it. So here we go. First thing we'll do is domain and range. Basically, domain, the definition of domain is what, what are you allowed to put in for x? What can you put in a function? Range is okay, what can you get out of the function? Looking at a graph, domain is how far the graph goes left to right. How far left to right is it going? And the range is basically how far is the graph going up and down. Or you always go down to up from bottom to top. So looking at this one down here, you can, the answer is already down there, but the domain, look at left to right. Left to right is going from negative 2 to positive 2, just like that. So there's your domain. Notice your brackets because they're filled in circles. Range is how far up and down it's going. So you're looking at the y. Range is y. Range is y. Range is y. So it's going from 0 on the y-axis up to 2 on the y-axis, so the range is 0 to 2. Pretty easy. Domain, how far left and right it's going. Range, how far up and down it's going. But in the values of a function... Um, you've done stuff like this with outer graph before, but like part A right there says find t of 1. All right, t of 1. So I'm going to find 1 on my x-axis. I'm just going to go up and see about where the graph is. It looks like it's about a 25. So I say t of 1 is t of one is 25. Let's find t of 3. t of 3, I'm going to go to 3 right here and go up there. It looks like mm, it's about 30. Let's do one more. t of 5. t of 5. Find 5 right here and go up there. It's about right at 20. And that's all you have to do. This one says which is larger, T2 or T5. Um, T of 2 is way up here. T of 5 is way down here. So definitely T of 2 would be the larger right there. And that's probably what we're going to do with those. Okay, so we'll do one more. Let's do a C. For what values of X is the, is the function at 25? So I'm going to find 25, which is right there. Okay, so uh, the value X would be 1 where that happens. And also, let's see if it happens right there. It happens again. And at 4. So the 1 and 4 for C is where it would equal 25. Part D says where is it bigger than 25. So if I drew a line around at 25, I'm looking for all the values in between there, which is between 1 and 4. So I would say between 1 and 4. All right, let's keep going. Increasing. Increasing means as you're looking at the graph from left to right, it is going up. And decreasing is if you're looking at the graph from left to right, it's falling. So then here's a great picture. This section right here, I'm going to trace it out with my marker here, A to B right there. It is definitely increasing on that interval. And we're looking at the we're looking at the x-axis, by the way. So between A and B, it's increasing. Also, right here, between C and D, it's also increasing. And, of course, the other part right here, between B and C, it's going down between those two. So it's decreasing between those. So increasing, and again, we're looking at the x's, looking at what's happening as you're looking left to right. Is it going up or is it going down? Is it rising or is it falling? Um, here's a good one right here. It says the uh, graph in figure 5 gives the weight of a person at age X. Determine intervals in which the weight is increasing and which is decreasing. Okay, so basically when you're born, believe it or not, you start gaining weight. So the first part of the graph from 0 all the way. Let's see where it goes here. I'm trying to make my marker work. From 0 until you get to right here, you're increasing from 0 to 150 pounds by the age of, let's estimate that going down there. Let's about, let's talk about 25. So... We're going to say it's increasing. It's increasing from 0 to 25. And I'm going to put 25 with the parentheses because 25 is also included in the part where the next little section. So it's included twice or it's not included other times. So I'm just going to kind of leave that with the parentheses. It's also increasing right here. Right, the next section, I don't know why I'm I, there we go. It's increasing right there, which looks like it's between 35 and 40. So I'm going to put a, remember this symbol right here. So I'm going to say it's increasing between 35 and 40. And that's the only place it's increasing. Now, the only place I see it decreasing, which means um, we're actually losing weight, all right, would be this section of the graph right here, which starts at the 40 and goes to about 50. So it decreases from 40 to 50. And I guess people between their 40s are, you know, we're like, oh, man, I'm, Getting kind of big, so it need to lose some weight. And then, as you can see, the rest of your life, after 50, kind of flattens out. Man, I hope that's true because I'm in that category. Also, when the graph is flat like that, or it's not increasing or decreasing, we call it constant. Now, this graph, the directions here didn't ask you for that, but that's what we would call it if it asked you what the con where, where the graph was constant. Local maxes and local mins, they call them maxima and minima. Um, so anytime... I would say the top of a hill on a graph. Like right there, there's a local max. There's another local max. Down here's a local min. There's a local min. And the reason they're called local is because the graph, if you look at this, that graph, even though the arrows aren't there, they should be, 
it's going to keep on going down on this end and keep on going up on that end. So it's not the absolute top of the graph or absolute bottom of the graph. So that's why they call it local. If it's the large, if it is the absolute top or bottom, they call it the absolute max and absolute min instead of local max and local min. We're going to find them now in a calculator on our last slide. Okay, heads up, this slide is going to be a little bit different because I'm just going to talk to you some calculator steps. This one says find the local max and local min values for the function f of x is x cubed minus 8x plus 1 and round to the three decimal places. Use a calculator, which I can't really show you. I can't video myself using a calculator. We'll go through this tomorrow in class. But if you have your calculator with you, um, stop the video right now, punch in that function, go to y equals your y equals button and punch in this function right here. And you should see this picture, the same picture I have down here. Now, on this picture, that's a local max, that's a local min. And you got to find those two things. All right, so I'm going to talk you through those steps real quick. First of all, after you graph it, hit graph or hit zoom six when you graph. We'll talk about zoom six on tomorrow. I want you to hit second, the second button, which is light blue, and hit trace, second trace. And number two right there says, uh, sorry, number four says maximum. So hit the number four. It says left bound. You must trace to the left side of your maximum. So I, I just took my cursor and traced over to there. I'm going to hit enter. Then it says right bound. I'm going to trace to the right side. Hit enter. There's my right bound. Then the calculator says guess. Hit enter one more time. And it tells me what the min is. Okay. The minimum value, or actually the min occurs at negative 1.6. Three, three. That's three decimal places. That's the x coordinate at the maximum. Okay, so that's the local max right there. Now to find the minimum, again, please try, try this with me. Um, it's right down here. Hit second, trace, number two. Trace down close to it, but stay on the left side because your calculator says left bound. Stay on the left side. That's the left side right there of the answer. Hit enter. Then it says right bound. Right bound, trace to the right side. So I traced over to about somewhere right there. Hit enter again. It says guess. Hit enter one more time. And I did something wrong. Let me try that one more time. This is embarrassing on a video. So second calc, number two. Left bound, where I had it. Right bound, where I had it. Enter. Oh, I hit. I see what I did. Second trace, third time. I'm looking for minimum. I keep hitting zero. Minimum. Uh, left bound. Trace to the same place, right bound, trace to the same place, guess, enter, and I get this one point. I got positive 1.633. That will not always happen, by the way. That was kind of lucky that that happened. I got the same number, just one's positive, one's negative. Sorry that took me so long. I kept hitting the wrong button like three times. So make sure you have your calculators when you come into class tomorrow because we'll be doing some of these on the calculator. And make sure you know your left and your right. That's the biggest deal. All right. See you tomorrow.